So in episode 7, we saw a huge death, and a death that's going to be a game changing moment for Jukebox going forward when she does find out next week, and especially when she finds out there was Kanan's product, which killed Nicole. Jukebox was someone who mentioned that there were secrets that Kanan didn't know, but now there are a few secrets that Jukebox doesn't. But we're going to dive deeper to this death in this video, along with Raquel trying to hit back for the attack on Scrappy, and what we saw play out with Unique and Lulu at Lamont's Diner. So we're going to dissect all things episode 7 in this review and recap, but of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But let's start where this episode kicked off, and it's a question that a lot of people had in the week, was Scrappy dead? And we saw Raquel coming out of the hospital where she's taken Scrappy, and she even confirmed in the conversation with Kanan at the beginning of the episode that Scrappy has lost an eye and a kidney, but he knew the risks when he infiltrated Unique's organisation, he knew the game, but he's strong and he's going to be back. I don't know whether we're going to see Scrappy again this season, but leaving Scrappy alive was definitely a mistake from Unique. This is something that's going to come back for sure, and Scrappy will come back for revenge himself when he's all well and recovered. And something I'm going to dive deeper on in the week is how we saw a similar situation play out in power. At the end of season 2, Ghost believed that he killed Kanan, he stabbed him and thought he burned him alive, but what Ghost didn't know was that Kanan being the tough bastard that he was, he managed to break free and survive. He was then able to disguise himself as Slim and effectively move under the radar because his enemies thought he was dead. And I really do wonder if this is a similar situation to what we could see Raquel do with the use of Scrappy because Unique and his crew may well think he's dead, but let's wait and see. And this is something I'm going to touch on later on this week in a bit more detail, but revenge was going to be swift and fast in this episode because there was no way Raquel was going to sit back and let someone do this to one of our most trusted soldiers, especially after she put him in that dangerous position herself. But like she said, he knew the risks, but she was still going to protect him. She tasked Lulu with killing Warrell because he's the go-to guy to get shit done, and I'm actually surprised he didn't kill Warrell. But he did have him running down the street butt naked. And with Scrappy still being alive, I think eventually once he's back on his feet, whenever that may be, he'd probably come back for Warrell after he survived Lulu's revenge mission in this episode. And I will come back to all things Lulu, Warrell, and this conversation with Unique as I run through this episode. But we saw Raquel, Kane, and Lulu meeting at the apartment and Lulu said that Unique has something set up on the highway at the gas station. Not knowing that it was actually Marvin who was stationed up there, Raquel said that they were meeting their new connect today anyway. But we saw Marvin's business in full swing. At the beginning of this episode, he took on board what Kanan taught him about the folks at the gas station, just dashing quickly, something he learned from Symphony. But he's kept this quiet from Raquel and Lulu. Now Kanan and a few of Marvin's boys start cooking up some crack and stepping on product which has already been stepped on, which they start to give out free to drug addicts as a way of getting their product out on the streets and testing this new batch that they've cooked. But the way this was cooked by Kanan killing these two drug addicts and three more out on the streets, Kanan learns a new lesson in this episode with what this drug can really do if this product is stretched more than it should be and this also had huge repercussions on what happened to Nicole at the end of the episode as well and we're going to come to all things Jukebox and Nicole's storyline in a moment because Raquel then goes to meet Julia at the bodega where she gives her a piece of paper where it tells her where her cousin wants to meet her but for the first time we actually see Julia with a clean face. We're so used to seeing her battered and bruised face by her husband Gabriel and she told Raquel that she chose her because she's a woman that knows how to treat men and with Julia helping Raquel she said just let her know when she can help her and with Raquel's past and what we witnessed with the building inspector it's safe to say Raquel is someone who won't stand for a man trying to take advantage of a woman or putting hands on them and I can see Raquel dealing with Gabriel in the next episode but then we see Raquel meeting Julia's cousin for the first time at this boxing match and his name's Joaquin Rack said that she's about to clean up Southside and she's going to be number one and that he doesn't need to worry about competition and he likes her. So it seems like Raquel will now have a new connect who's Joaquin. But how she plans on taking out her competition which is unique is another question. Or will she take out his connect which is Dean? Now one thing Rack told us in this episode is she has a vision beyond the drug business, kind of. She wants to build this business to the point where Lulu can take over and where she can sit back and collect the checks. But whether she can, we're just going to have to wait and see. But we know there was this mention of her in power in season 2 episode 2 but let's wait and see. Let's talk about this huge death and a huge death that's going to impact Jukebox going forward because she loved Nicole. She even loved her enough to tell her that she was going to stop boosting and hitting licks. That's how much Nicole seemed to have changed her. But the crack that she smoked and died with came from Jukebox's bag which Kanan gave to her and at some point when Jukebox finds out about Nicole's death in next week's episode, she's going to realise that the crack is missing from her bag and put two and two together and know that it was Kanan's bad crack that killed Nicole and Nicole's parents would probably blame Jukebox for her death and Jukebox would probably blame herself at first and this promise that she made to Nicole about her not boosting anymore that's going to go out the window because that was a thing in power. She'd probably be back to hitting licks and start becoming a little reckless and this is where Detective Burke will come in if she catches her and maybe letting her off because she's going to be understanding. 
Detective Howard said that these children are our future in this episode and that's the approach I think Detective Berg will take with Jukebox. She'll see Jukebox as her future and probably because Berg is into girls herself which is why she's going to be so understanding and be there for Jukebox because she'll be able to relate to her but this death is going to be huge for Jukebox and we're going to see the aftermath of it next week. But let's talk about this conversation that went down with Unique and Lulu at Lamont's diner because it was going to happen sooner or later. In the week I spoke about how Unique started to plant the seed in Lulu's mind about being this leader and being more understanding than Raquel. Last week we saw Lulu approaching Unique for a favour and this week we saw Unique approach Lulu and ask him to flip sides and he made him an offer which does actually sit with Lulu's vision and his vision for music. Something that Rack said that he needs to get out of his mind in this episode because he missed with Warrell and he never misses. But Unique offered him a spot in his organisation telling him that he's a visionary and that his organisation can use someone like him and he'll never stop him from building his side hustle with music. But here's the issue, it's not the side hustle for Lulu, he wants it to be his main hustle, he's definitely someone who wants out of the game so he passes upon Unique's offer. There's no way I can see Lulu flipping sides but in my breakdown earlier on in the week I did say we can never say never because family do turn on each other all the time. This is the streets, this is the game, Kanan taught us that remember? That was a quote from Tommy in season 6 of Power when Go said that they were brothers at a time where they were beefing and we saw them turn on each other for a period of time so this right here would have again planted another seed into Lulu's mind and can't see him flipping anytime soon and it was only a one time offer anyway which Lulu rejected. So there's going to be a war because Unique wants to take Rack out. He said in a few months whoever's standing with her will be taken out too. On the other hand we had Raquel who promised Joaquin that she's going to be the only one in Southside. So shit is definitely hotting up with the war between Unique and Rack. Now elsewhere in the episode we had Raquel, Symphony, Kanan and Davina having dinner together. We saw Raquel forgive Symphony for not telling her about Kanan being arrested. They're back together now. But at the end of the night Davina questions Kanan about Famous's rap. She questions this whole four quarters and two dimes lyrics aimed at buck 20. We saw how hurt she was and this caused Kanan to come from Famous. He said that it was only a lyric and rappers rap about shit they ain't done and Kanan said not to rap about his life and they quickly made up and it was never really going to turn into anything else. But we also saw Kanan telling Raquel about how Detective Howard approached him today and how he said that he should ask his mums about him. He'd be surprised with what he finds out and she definitely wasn't pleased. So I can see them coming together next week and Raquel possibly finding out about Detective Howard's cancer and his real motive with the whole bone marrow transplant. But that was episode 7 and two huge talking points coming away from this week's episode is of course the death of Nicole and Unique's offer to Lulu. How is Jukebox going to react when she finds out about Nicole's death and how she's going to react when she finds out that Kanan's product is what killed her. And could we really see Lulu flip sides because Unique has laid his cards on the table for Lulu, he's happy for him to carry on doing his music shit and he's actually encouraging him to do it. But what will it take for him to turn on Rack because this is power and you can never say never because we've seen family turn on each other before and we've even seen family kill each other before. So could we really see Lulu flip sides? Let me know what you guys think, drop all your thoughts and comments down below in the comment section and of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related but as always I'm going to be back with my second video later on this evening so remember to have the notification bell turned on as well but as always thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.